You know, we were talking about how the hell am I going to save this talk? <laughs> what am I going to talk about? And I figured, screw it, I'm just going to tell you guys a story of what happened. So this is kind of a case study. Um, the more accurate title is probably what I learned for 106 days at a tech startup, a case study in GIFs. Um, and this blue here is Tumblr blue because I had created the presentation while I was still working at Tumblr. That was like our official PowerPoint. Um, and all of these GIFs are from Tumblr as well. Um, so in order to talk to you about the future, um, I think I need to go back to the past a little bit. So I'll just tell you my story. Um, I graduated from J school in 2004. And I have sort of felt like the media grim reaper, <laughs> that's him, has been following me all along the way. Um, my first internship was at the Seattle Post Intelligencer in my hometown. Um, one of the last remaining two town papers um, went out of business. Uh, I did a fellowship while I was in college at the Boston Globe as a cops reporter. Um, quickly determined I was not meant to do cops. Uh, but you know, layoffs are happening while I was there, and now obviously the globe is up for sale. I moved to New York um, to be a journalist, and my first internship when I got there was at the Village Voice, working for an investigative reporter there on politics. Um, the Voice got put up for sale while I was there. <laughs> um, oh, and I forgot my next slide, just, this is print. Um, and. And then ultimately my first staff job was at Newsweek. Um, and I managed to be at Newsweek for seven years, so I had a great run and I did a lot of things. Uh, but I was there when the magazine got put up for sale by the Washington Post Company for one dollar. I was there when Sidney Harmon, 94-year-old man, bought it and Tina Brown took over. And then I was there when Sidney passed away and once again it was like, what the hell are we gonna do? So I stayed on for about a year at the Daily Beast, Newsweek Daily Beast. Um, we had our own kind of identity crisis. How are we going to merge the two brands? And then ultimately, I decided, you know, I kind of have PTSD from this whole thing. Like I've watched so many colleagues either be laid off or voluntarily leave. Like desks were just rotating, people moving in and out. Um, it was time for me to try something new. And this is the Tumblr tea. Um, I've put some filler slides here in case I'm giving you guys a seizure with all these gifts. <laughs> so holler. Um, so I had been doing the Newsweek Tumblr. My job was as a writer and editor at Newsweek covering mostly social issues, editing for the website. Um, but on the side, I, I had taken over the Newsweek Tumblr when my former colleague left Newsweek for Tumblr. So there was kind of a precedent for this. Um, and, and his job at Tumblr was to do more media outreach, and I really didn't want to leave traditional journalism. So I kept saying to them, you know, if you guys ever want to do editorial, I'm your woman, um, call me up. And ultimately, they did. They decided that it would be worthwhile to hire two journalists to tell the stories of Tumblr. So, that's what I just said. <laughs> These are cues for me. Um, so I started, and we created a site called Storyboard. And the idea was, if Tumblr, if you thought of Tumblr as a city of 100 million people, that's how many users there are, we're covering the stories that are coming out of Tumblr, just like the Times is covering the stories that come out of New York. Um, and initially, they hired journalists because they didn't want this to look like a marketing effort. I mean, it's kind of a brilliant ploy at really modern day marketing because all the stories are coming out of this community. You're talking about the trends and the ideas that are coming out of Tumblr. Um, you know, you're catering to this huge audience of mostly young people, and then you're trying to get the stories out. So this was our site, it still exists, <laughs> storyboard.tumblr.com. Um, we would publish a feature story a day, so we weren't covering breaking news. A lot of them were long form features, profiles, we did a lot of original video. And I wanted to make good journalism. So the challenge was, how do you relate every story that you do back to Tumblr without sounding like a total cheerleader? Um, and so we had to be very creative. 
So a couple of the stories we did. Um, the New York Times has an amazing Tumblr called the Lively Morgue, where three times a week they digitize an image from their, their morgue, um, their archive morgue, where they keep all the old photos going back 200 years, and they post it to Tumblr. It's simple. Tumblr, but beautiful. And you can see the original photographer's notes on the back of the image, just very cool. So we were like, how do we feature this? How do we do something that isn't promotional, but is cool? So we went into the morgue. Um, I don't think anyone had been into the morgue in years, except for the one man who operates it. It's in the sub-sub basement of the building next door to the New York Times. Um, there's no internet service. There's no phone service. There are cockroaches, uh, dead cockroaches, belly up all over the floors. Um, and the man who runs it is fascinating. So we essentially profiled the morgue. And, and this was a place that at one time had been the heart of the newsroom. It had staffed 30 people. Um, Sulzberger would take people through the morgue, um, celebrities, when he was touring them around the office. And over the years, you know, the space has shrunk. It's moved further and further below ground, literally. Um, and there's one remaining guy who's there kind of trying to save the morgue. And so what the Tumblr has done has actually breathed new life into it in, in many ways. So typical story that you might read in any publication, um, a story about journalism, but kind of sparked by this whole Tumblr that they had. Um, another piece we did, one of the things we tried to do was partner with mainstream media outlets so that we could expand these stories beyond just the internal Tumblr community. So this image of the postcard um, is it's made by a child, and these are the kinds of things that had been sent in mass to Newtown after the school shooting from children and schools all over the country. Um, we discovered that all of these were sitting in boxes in, in City Hall there, but they didn't have space for them, so they were actually going to destroy all of these cards. Um, so we worked with Mother Jones to start a Tumblr where we would digitize these, take photos of all of them, post them to the Tumblr, and kind of keep a record of them in that way. Ultimately, we worked with Mother Jones to set a, send a videographer up there and produced a video piece about the cards. So, you know, in many ways it was using every platform available to us to create journalism and framing it around this blogging platform, but, um, but I think creating good content. Um, this was the election blog that we started for Tumblr, so this was the Tumblr's official election blog. We, we reached out to six bloggers on Tumblr, just regular people, not journalists, and we brought them to each of the conventions, um, and they blogged for us there, and this was from a phot photographer. Um, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of trends come out of Tumblr. I, I'm convinced that anything, any trend that happens in the world is happening on Tumblr six months prior. Um, it's actually a fantastic reporting ground, if you know how to search it. So, One Direction, the British boy band, <laughs> huge. Um, and enormous on Tumblr. Like the way that fandom is engaging on Tumblr it has redefined fandom in general. And so we, I, I went on the road with some directioners, as they call themselves, um, and, and we did a, a long form piece about the super fans of One Direction. Um, so <laughs> it was fun. It was an exciting job and it, I got to essentially surf this huge platform for trends. Um, and I loved it. There were also some challenges uh, to working in a tech company. Um, you know, phones are usually crucial when you're a reporter because uh, you need to call people. Uh, Tumblr didn't have landlines, <laughs> so I would literally crouch in the stairwell of the elevator shaft and make calls on my cell phone, which would cut out all the time. Um, and it was impossible to get a landline. I mean, they had no need for landlines before. Um, but we did have a kegerator. Um, <laughs> this was created by some brilliant engineers. You could actually put your finger on it, read your fingerprint, know who you are, and tell you how many ounces of beer you had drank out of the kegerator over any amount of time. <laughs> um, we also had beer pong and ping pong. Um, my desk was like right to the left of that ping pong table. so. You know, when I'm making calls on my cell phone, there's like ping pong games going on next to me, <laughs> which was awesome. Um, so uh, it could be a little frustrating. And what do you do when you're frustrated and you're a journalist at Tumblr? You take to your Tumblr to post things like this. <laughs> um, that's pretty much how, how it went. Um, but Tumblr was killing it. 
Um, we, in every way imaginable, Tumblr was all over the news. We had just reached 100 million users. We were a trivia question on Jeopardy. Um, this is a picture of Big Boy from Outcast. All of these musicians were getting on Tumblr, including Frank Ocean, who used the platform to come out about his sexuality and then landed on the cover of the New York Times Magazine. Macklemore, who's got the number one song right now, um, he kind of got his launch on Tumblr. The Obama campaign was killing it on Tumblr, and during Hurricane Sandy, what was interesting was many of the, the big media outlets like Huffington Post and Gawker were all housed in downtown Manhattan and their servers were flooded. So they took to Tumblr to break news. So from a journalistic perspective, everything that was happening was very exciting. Um, and every week on Fridays, we'd go over the news, and it was always headlines like this. The coolest people on the planet use Tumblr, says my alma mater. Uh, I don't know how cool Newsweek is, but um, Tumblr could represent a dizzying reorientation of how media gets made from BuzzFeed. And that was in reference directly to what we were doing there. So it was exciting. All these people were saying great things about us. Um, we, <laughs> we live gift the presidential debates. Nobody had done this before. Now everybody does this. Um, I mean, you know, how can you not like doing that? It's fun. <laughs> Um, still, it was always a challenge explaining what I did, um, particularly to family members. Uh, so, I was going to read it, but I guess you guys are reading it. Yeah, something like, family member, what are you doing now? Jess, I work at Tumblr. Remember when you wrote that Newsweek cover story? I, st I still have that. Jess, well, you know, you know, mom, I still write stories. You can find them online. Um, family. Why would anyone leave such a great magazine? Jess, well, okay, but it's not even printing anymore. Family, do you think that they would hire you back? <laughs> um, and then talking and explaining to old media colleagues. Um, this happened, I cannot tell you how many times. So what do you do? I'm the executive editor at Tumblr. Oh, so like you just are the editor of your personal blog? <laughs> Um, which I would get really angry about, but had to just be zen about it. Um, so it got to the point where I actually created this page on my own Tumblr blog explaining what the hell I do um, or did. So what you asked does it mean that Tumblr has an editorial team? What's the point of an in-house publication? Are you an actual journalist? Yes. Um, think of it this way. Tumblr has 90 million, now it's more users. Those users are creating and observing and partaking in all sorts of fascinating culture. If you think of Tumblr like a city, a really big city with a lot of teenagers, then Tumblr storyboard is like the local newspaper or magazine for that city. Um, and traffic and reach, I mean, more than 50% of Tumblr's, Tumblr's users are under 34 probably more like under 25. Um, and you know, this is a hard graphic to read because I just used it because of the cat, obviously. But um, you know, Tumblr's reach is three times that of the New York Times, it's five times that of CNN and Time Magazine. It's huge and it's the, the kind of audience that everybody wants to reach. So things seem to be going really great. <laughs> um, and as a journalist, this is Beyonce being vain, uh, you assume that the content speaks for itself. You know, when I was at Newsweek, when I would write a great piece and it would change the conversation and it would get people talking and I would go on TV and it would get lots of traffic, that was considered a success. I never really thought about having to prove my existence. <laughs> um, and then one day, I'm in LA on assignment and I, suddenly there's all these frantic emails about needing to have this call with our editorial team and um, can, I, can I get on the phone? And I'm actually headed to the airport. I'm going to be back in New York in six hours. But a Tumblr couldn't wait. So they called. Um, I was on speakerphone. They had finally put some phones in the office. Uh, I couldn't hear anything. So I kept being like, what? wait, what? what? We're laid off? What? Um, and they eliminated our department. Um, it was confusing because in the same breath that they said everything we were doing was brilliant, um, they were getting rid of us. And so, you know, I was in shock for a second and then I realized that, oh, I just got <laughs> fired over the phone, <laughs> speakerphone in fact, so I couldn't even hear it. Um, it's my girl's response to this. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm in the taxi going to the airport. Here, basically, this is what happened. Um, are you kidding me? <laughs> Disbelief. Um, 
outrage. How could you possibly do this? <laughs> Sadness. It's Anne Hathaway being sad. And, you know, it wouldn't be journalism if you didn't get drunk. <laughs> so I... My corporate credit card hadn't been turned off yet, so I upgraded uh, to Main Cabin Select. It wasn't that much, in case Tumblr's watching this. Um, ordered a few cocktails, and then proceeded to write like an insane post to my Tumblr blog, um, farewell post, because we had Wi-Fi on, on the plane, um, that then got picked up. Uh, I'll spare you from it, but it just involved a lot of caps lock and like misspellings and weird things and me talking about being drunk on a plane. And here's Ryan Gosling reacting to it. <laughs> He's so on point. <laughs> um, so, okay, there, there is a lesson here, I think. And I've thought about this a lot since, um, since ending. Um, I think, first off, experimental projects are always the easiest to kill, even if they're great. And, you know, we weren't dealing with people who appreciated journalism just for journalism. This was a tech company. The, the end result was they needed to keep the site up and running and they needed users. So when, it, when push came to shove, it was easy to get rid of us. What were we bringing? Um, doing journalism at a non-journalistic entity. I did not think about this at all going in because I'd only worked at media outlets. And so you assume that producing this great content is going to be rewarded. But when, you know, having engineers who can get the site back up and running when it goes down and community outreach people who are going to expand your audience is, is really the top goal, then do you really need these journalists who are telling the stories of Tumblr? I mean, we produce great stuff, but ultimately, the value wasn't as clear. Um, I hate this term. <laughs> um, Jennifer Lawrence hates it too. Uh, I, in fact, had to Google this term <laughs> about two months ago when I started my new job um, at Cheryl Sandberg's organization because I'm working with all MBAs. Uh, but I never thought about the return on investment. I was like, I'm giving you all this great stuff. You figure out what to do with it and how to, how to get a return. So I have that term ringing in my head now because I will think very hard about any future job prospect and what the return on the investment is. Um, you know, setting measurable goals at Tumblr we never really had any measurable goals. It, it, you know, it was a very touchy-feely mandate. Just tell great stories about creators on Tumblr. And we did that, and we did it well, but at the end of the day, what could we say? You know, we brought in some traffic, but it couldn't compete with 150 million users. Um, we produced good content, and it got pickup, but we weren't engineers who could keep the site up and running. Um, business people like to measure things. What, what were we really bringing to them? Um, and, you know, ultimately, <laughs> cash sort of rules in a lot of ways. Uh, as we know now, based on the Yahoo acquisition of Tumblr. We did not know, for the record, that that was happening when we got laid off. I think that probably had something to do with it. it was an e we were an easy place to cut fat. Um, but really thinking about the value and what you can bring and what you can deliver financially um, or make the case about it going in. Um, and it was interesting because after we, you know, getting very publicly fired is good in a way because you start getting calls from everyone <laughs> about jobs. Um, and I cannot tell you how many brands got in touch with me wanting to do content. Everybody wants to do content now. It's like the catchphrase, the keyword that everyone likes to use. And companies like Coca-Cola is producing a magazine, Etsy, Airbnb, on and on and on. And so there's this huge market for jobs there, and it's kind of this new emerging market, and I know a lot of journalists have looked into it, but these are all really important things to think about going in, because at the end of the day, these are not people who are going to say, that was an amazing article you wrote, and it really changed the conversation around whatever, and keep you on staff. Um, so would I do it again? Yes, absolutely. Um, it was fun, it was exciting, and I learned a lot, but I would think about all of these things going forward. This is my, my goodbye, it takes a minute to load. <laughs> Thank you.